in their minds when they label as the first kids. I'll ask for them because I feel like that I can probably have more to give. So as a school resource officer, it is our job basically to connect and get resources outside of just being the police, but also team up with the administrators, the social workers. I do home visits. I do all kinds of things um, that people would never think in a million years. It's like when they see me walking in school, oh Lord, the police here. Who she coming get? I'm like, I'm not coming get nobody. You know, or some of the kids would be like, Oh, Mr. Conley, why are you here? You know, like that. If they know me, I'll be like, I'm just here. You know, so sometimes the stigma is like they feel like I'm coming to get somebody, but really I'm just there trying to formulate those relationships whenever I can. Yeah, I can speak from personal experience with first meeting you as a school resource officer. Um, and yeah, I, you were just always around. Yeah. And for both, um, I think forming that, you know, forming that relationship, there's power in being there for the fall festival or when there's the positive things that are going on and that involve families at the school, right? But then also when more serious um, challenges arose at the school. So I think that there's, um, yeah, and, and you have 13 schools in your portfolio? Yes, okay. I do. And I know they're important. <laughs> yeah, at one time I was by myself, but now I have um, an additional partner. So he also works with me, but you know, he's not into the job, but he's into school resource. So I'm trying to train him um, just to get familiar with doing some of the things and formulate relationships as well. All right, Ms. Vivi, if you can talk, tell us a little bit about um, your day-to-day -day and um, specifically as it intersects with this topic around girls and incarceration. Sure. Um, can you guys hear me okay? I'm terrible with microphones. So I work for the Jefferson Parish District Attorney's Pre-Trial Juvenile Diversion Program, which is a mouthful, and I don't know um, to the extent that it's used in Orleans Parish, but pretty much any time a young lady or a young gentleman is arrested in Jefferson Parish, the district attorney screens the case and then decides if they're going to proceed with the trial, dismiss the charge, or divert the charge. So if they divert the charge, it comes to us. When a young person first comes to our program, they meet with the diversion counselor, and all of our counselors are social workers or counseling counselors, um, LPCs or MSWs. And they really try to sit down with the young person and figure out what caused the arrest to occur. Because arrests happen for all sorts of reasons. Um, and we really want to make sure that our program is being used properly to help keep the young person from ending up further entering the juvenile justice system. So, I mean, one thing that's been shown, and this is, you know, national data, is that a young person is likely to commit a crime, like 90% of young people commit some sort of crime at some point in their life. It's a normative teenage behavior. And repeated contact with the juvenile justice system makes it more likely for a young person to stay in the system. So our program is really trying very hard to not keep young people in our program in the system. So we're trying to assess to see what needs to happen to help the young person and then get them out of our program as quickly as possible. Success is like very limited time in our program. The less time a young person is in our program, the better. So the assessment process that we do is to try to see like what's the minimum amount of contact a young person can have with us to create the maximum impact and then to go back into the community and not have to deal with the justice system and not have to go through metal detectors week after week to meet with us. Great, thank you. Um, so I'd like to turn it over to Renesha and Haley. Um, Haley, do you want to start us off by just telling us a little bit, um, an opportunity to just tell, tell the audience a little bit more about yourself, um, and then anything else that you'd like to share about your experience with the system? Basically, my experience with the system is, I've been placed in the alternative center from the state that I have made, and basically, one year I've been assigned for a full year, and then this year I've been assigned for 45 days, and I'll be leaving December 18th. Thank you.
So I'm going to repeat the question again. So anything that you'd like to share um, about yourself, who you are, and then also your experience with the juvenile justice system. I was put in a... I was involved in a fight with my friend and they called it a gang fight and they put us in a... a prison system for four to five days. Thank you. Um, so, have you? So, Haley, we'll go back to you. Um, so, how? What would? How would you describe your experience? What were some of the main challenges that you had, and who's helped you to be able to um, move through those challenges? Who's been the network of people around you that have helped you? Well, basically, the person who has been helping me is my mother and the teacher that does her consider the people who are trying to keep me together. And what does that look like? How do they try to keep you together? Just give us a little program to go back to my child. Okay, to prepare you to go back to school. Mm -hmm. What about you? Who's been who's been in your in your network in your family that's helped you to um, move through that experience of being in the facility for 45 days and um, receiving the support that you need? So mom and teacher is a whole community of folks. Okay. Um, I guess again for the girls. Um, Haley, if there's if there's one thing that you wish someone would have offered you to support you, um, what would it be? Like in your in Haley's dream state of the world, um, knowing the, the experiences that you've had and the things that you've been challenged by, what's one thing that you feel like could be different? I feel this, they could have given me another chance to stay in school. Also, what's different? At least to kind of talk to me and ask about what I'm doing and I feel about this place. Mm -hmm. So, who's they? Do you wish that they could have sat down and talked with you? We need the assistant principal. The assistant principal. So, it was at the school level that you felt like you weren't being heard. This one. Okay. Um, Asia, what about you? I wish they would have believed me. So you didn't feel, again, it sounds like maybe not being heard, not being believed. Okay. So I guess for Ms. Conway and, um, and Ms. Vivi, how does it he feel to hear those things? That, you know, do you, see, do you see young girls not being heard? Are you frustrated by that? You know, what, um, what sorts of things do you think that we could do as a community to better to make sure that the young women who are coming becoming system involved can be better served by that system. Okay, for me, I just feel like, um, yes, I do believe kids are not heard all the time. I don't think it's just girls. I think it's overall. Um, I do believe that in the school system that they are really overworked. So sometimes they feel like they don't want to take the time to hear, but when you make a call to me, I have to take the time to hear. Maybe I don't have to, but I do because I'm fair. You know, I always be fair. So if I'm called, then I want to know what, why, how, and I'm digging. So it might take me a while to be there, but if I have to do anything, then I'm just not going to. And I know that upsets people sometimes, but it's, you know, it's just the way I am. And I think that always makes a difference because like I said, they may not have the time to sit there or they may just be tired of the child just acting out all the time. So I have to find out though. Like I said, I just can't not find out. So it's a big difference to me. 
So it sounds like what you're describing takes a little bit more time, maybe a little bit more effort, even more training and just experience on the ground, right? But that it's possible to really hear, hear young people. Yes, you, you can feel sometimes. Even they might have to calm down sometimes, but I think after you get them calm, then they'll tell you what happened or why it happened. And then that'll lead you to make a better judgment call on what you're gonna do with the child. Mm -hmm. It makes me really sad to hear that you didn't have the chance to feel listened to. Um, and I think that that's a big problem everywhere. Um, and in the school system, I think that can, that can really be a problem. I think there's some really good programs that are being developed in both Orleans and Jefferson Parish around restorative practices. Um, I think maybe you, you're familiar with those too. And that is an opportunity in a school-based setting for young people to <coughs> sit down together, especially around fights and school-based incidences to discuss the conflict and come up with a plan with the school and with the community that doesn't necessarily involve outside system involvement. So I think things like that and initiatives like that really go a long way in allowing conflict to be dealt with within the community and not outsourcing it to different systems. Um, and when it does end up in other systems, I hope that the agencies where you end up having to deal with different people, that they are listeners and that they're being appropriately trained to really sit down and listen. I guess, do you...